Two spheres are placed near each other. The large sphere might be a planet and the small sphere a satellite near the planet. Together the two spheres have gravitational potential energy. The objective of this tutorial is to derive the equation used to compute the gravitational potential energy present in the two particle system. The diagram shows the radial distance from the center of the large sphere to the center of the small sphere is capital R. The small sphere is going to be moved from its original location farther and farther away from the larger sphere. Ultimately, until the small sphere is infinitely far away from the large sphere. During this move, the force of gravity does work on the two spheres. The work done by the gravitational force will be equal to the negative change in the gravitational potential energy. This relationship was established in the unit on work and energy. When you do some work to lift an object, the gravitational potential energy increases. While you're doing that work to lift an object, the force of gravity does negative work. The force of gravity does negative work when the gravitational potential energy increases. If you drop the object, gravity will be, be doing positive work on the object as it falls, and the potential energy will be decreasing. So the work done by gravity is equal to the opposite of the change in the gravitational potential energy. We'll use this relationship to derive an equation to compute gravitational potential energy present in a two-particle system, two particles of mass m and m separated by a radial distance r. To compute the work done, we have to use the formula the integral of force dot displacement because the gravitational force varies as the separation distance between the two particles changes. The left side of the equation shows the work done by the, force of, by the variable force. The right side of the equation shows the negative change in gravitational potential energy. As the separation distance increases from capital R, that was the initial in the, in the picture that was shown above, an R, a separation of R to a separation of infinity, the gravitational force varies according to Newton's universal law of gravitation. The force size is equal to G M M over R squared. The displacement is represented here in differential form. And then you need to remember to take the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. Since the gravitational force the large sphere exerts on the small sphere is back toward the large sphere, but the small, small sphere is being moved away from the large sphere, the angle between the force and the displacement is 180 degrees. When you take the one, cosine of 180 degrees, you get negative 1. That's why this negative appears right here. So what I've done is taken the size of the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the two. That angle is 180 degrees. Cosine of 180 is negative 1. This is the size of the force acting as the distance between the two goes from r to infinity. On the right side of the equation, I've distributed the negative sign. In the next line of the derivation, the constants negative g m m are brought out front. Then we will integrate 1 over r squared dr from capital R to infinity. Over here, the final potential energy is the potential energy at infinite separation. The initial potential energy was the potential energy at a separation of capital R. Which of those two measurements do you assume will be zero? Will it be the gravitational potential energy at infinite separation? Or will it be the gravitational potential energy at the initial separation? In fact, you can see the, in, the final potential energy. Potential energy, when the two masses are infinitely far apart, will be zero. On the left side of the equation, 
I've integrated 1 over r squared dr. Recall that 1 over r squared is r to the negative second. So you might want to write the integral of r to the negative second. When you integrate that, you get negative 1 over r. That has to be evaluated from capital R to infinity. The infinity is placed in the denominator minus what we get when we put capital R in the denominator. Negative 1 over infinity will be 0. Neg minus negative 1 over r will be positive 1 over r. We'll multiply by that by negative gmm. As a result, the gravitational potential energy with a radial separation of capital R is equal to negative gmm over r. In general, gravitational potential energy is then equal to negative g m m over the radial distance between the two masses. At first it might be surprising that the gravitational potential energy is always negative. Recall that there's no potential energy when the two masses are infinitely far apart. Anything closer means there's less potential energy. Less means the potential energy has to be negative because potential energy is a scalar. Recall when we studied vectors initially, negative 4 meters per second was not less than positive 4 meters per second. It was in the other direction. But since potential energy is a scalar, negative potential energy is less than zero. Anytime the smaller mass is closer to the larger mass, the system has less potential energy. With potential energy equal to zero, at infinite separation, the potential energy can only be less than zero at any separation that's smaller than infinite separation. This derivation is not hard to follow and is found in a briefer version in your textbook. This derived equation is also found on the formula sheet and may be used for solving problems. So to conclude, one can find the gravitational potential energy in a two-particle system, if you put the two different masses here, the distance between their centers here, and the universal gravitational constant. If you have three particles in your system, you must use this equation several times. Once between mass 1 and 2, once between mass 1 and 3, and once between mass 2 and 3. Add the result obtained each time you use the equation, and you will get the total potential energy. Recall, potential energy is a scalar. You do pay attention to the fact that the potential energy is negative, but you don't have to deal with these the way you would deal with vectors that include direction. Hopefully you'll be able to effectively solve problems that focus on gravitational potential energy. Good luck on the assignment.